David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Something that I really like about the fountain pen hobby is the variety of manufacturers. There are extremely large companies, there are medium-sized companies, and there's also tons of smaller companies. What I like to call like one-person shops. Uh, craftsmen and women who create handmade pens. Some from stock materials they purchase and some who create their own rod stock. Uh, today, I have for you a pen from one of those smaller companies, the Heinz Pen Company, and the pen is called the Elementar. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Heinz Pen Company Elementar, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for, I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, and stay tuned to learn how you can win this very pen, courtesy of the Heinz Pen Company, who provided this pen for review and for me to give away to one of you. Uh, I also have a nice discount code you can use on the Heinz Pen site, so stay tuned for that as well. The man behind the Heinz Pen Company is Jim Hines. He's based out of Plano, Texas, which is just north of Dallas. And he's been making pens for over 15 years. Uh, Jim also runs training classes where he teaches folks how to create pens from scratch themselves. Uh, he started off by making kit pens, which is a common way for people to get started into pen making. And about four years ago, he began creating pens from scratch. And it's one of those pens that we'll be taking a look at today. The pen arrives in this metal box. On top, it's laser engraved. And then inside, in foam, is nestled the pen. This is the Heinz Elementar. Now, Jim creates some of his pens using purchased materials and stock, but the majority of his models are created using resins he creates himself, like this orange and white swirled material. Uh, it kind of reminds me of a creamsicle. Uh, the colors really blend nicely, and there's a, a lot of pearlescence to the material as well. I learned of Jim and his work at the DC show last year. Pen shows are a great place to discover new companies and creators. Uh, the DC show is this weekend. Uh, if you happen to be attending and you see me walking around, make sure you say hello. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the cap. Uh, the end of the cap is flat, then it angles up to a rounded transition, and then the rest of the cap is fairly straight. Uh, the transition between the cap and barrel is a little inconsistent. Uh, some parts are fairly flush, but other portions have a slight step down. This is relatively minor, but I would have cared to see a little bit more consistency in the transition. Uh, the cap and barrel are made from different portions of the rod stock, which is by necessity, but on this pen, I feel that the patterns are similar enough that it really doesn't make for a jarring visual transition between the cap and barrel. Uh, the barrel angles down, and then it tapers a bit to the end, and on the end of the barrel, it is flat with rounded edges. The cap twists off, and underneath there is a two-toned number six Yovo nib. Uh, Jim offers his pens with a choice of either Yovo or Bach nibs uh, in everything from extra fine all the way up to a 1.5 millimeter stub. Uh, this one here is a bold. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section is concave and a nice length. It transitions into the cap threads, which I don't find to be sharp, and there is a fairly aggressive step up to the barrel. Um, I do find the step up to be a bit steep, but for my standard grip, it really doesn't come into play. Uh, if you happen to grip your pens a little further back on the section, then it might be a little more troublesome for you. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is included. The cap does post and it does post securely, uh, and it, but it does add a considerable length to the pen. Uh, while the cap is very light and doesn't throw off the balance or back weight the pen at all, I can't say that I'm a big fan of the looks of this pen when it's posted. Some pens just look better posted than others. Uh, that's fine, however. This pen is plenty long enough to use unposted. The Heinz Elementar sells for $149, which is on par for many of the other handcrafted pens available from smaller manufacturers. Uh, Jim did provide a nice discount, however. If you use the code FIGBOOT on the Heinz pen site, you can receive a 15% discount on all purchases through the end of September 2019. Uh, for this pen, it would bring the price down to right around $125, which is very reasonable for what you receive with this pen.
Uh, I'll put a link in the notes below where you can check out all of Jim's offering on his site. Uh, here's actually a picture of one of his newest models called the Avencio, uh, a pen that he actually named after one of his customers. Uh, it began as a custom pen for that customer and it turned into a production model. So who knows, if you order a custom pen for Jim, you might just end up with getting a, a, that pen named after you. Uh, thanks again go out to Jim Hines for providing this pen for review and for giveaway. Uh, in regard to the giveaway, in order to enter, all you need to do is leave a comment here on this video in YouTube. If you are a Patreon supporter, I greatly appreciate that support, and you can alternatively leave a comment there. Uh, in regard to a comment topic, uh, I discovered the Heinz Pen Company while at the DC show last year. Uh, as I mentioned, pen shows are a great place to learn about new companies. So why don't you let me know of a company that you discovered while at a show? Uh, or if you've never had the opportunity to attend a show, maybe what's an interesting way that you learned about a company and their offerings. The comment topic is just a suggestion and is not required. Contest details and deadlines can be found in the notes below. Okay, so now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Heinz Pen Elementar. Uh, just as a comparison, this is another Heinz Pen model. Uh, this one is called the Bifrost, and it has similar dimensions, but it actually has a twist to post. In regard to some other pens that are made by smaller manufacturers, uh, this is something from Ryan Krusak. This is his Kraken pen. Then here is something from the Carolina Pen Company. I believe this is the Charleston model. Uh, and then finally, this is something from Pen 18111, which was a company that I actually discovered at last year's DC show. So I hope that there's a company that I discovered this year that I like as much uh, as the uh, Pen 18111 that I purchased last year, because I just love this pen. And in regard to some other pens, uh, here is what it looks like with a Twisby Eco. Uh, then here it is with a Lamy All Star. And then finally, here it is with a Lamy Stainless Steel 2000. So here we go with the Heinz Pen Company. Elementar. This is a, a broad stainless steel nib. Uh, and the ink that I'm using here today is one that I reviewed recently that I used in this pen that I still had in here, which is Blackstone Wild Orange. If you're, this is what the uh, bottle looks like. If you're interested in learning more about this ink, I did have an ink review uh, out just a couple of weeks ago. It's actually a scented uh, ink. And then this is what the color looks like. Uh, it is kind of a nice deep orange, kind of a red orange. Something somewhat similar to like the Papier Plume, House of the Rising Sun, uh, or even something like the Monteverde Mandarin Orange. It's a little bit more yellowish than, uh, a little more, I'm sorry, a little more brownish than, uh, than those, but it's kind of in the same family. And now we have the rest of the writing sample. Uh, I find that this broad nib, this broad Yovo nib, uh, writes very smoothly. Uh, that it lays down a decently thick line. You're not going to get a lot of fluctuation out of here or a lot of line variation. Uh, and in regard to some reverse writing, it's a little scratchy. Uh, and in regard to ink flow, it does just fine. And in regard to some fast writing,
there's no issues whatsoever. So there we have the Heinz pen uh, Elementar. Uh, it's always nice to see pens from smaller manufacturers uh, because it's always nice to discover something new. And this uh, pen was something that was very nice to discover. Uh, and I encourage you to check it out on the Heinz Pen site. And don't you forget to use the discount code if you decide to purchase something. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.